Hey VC, Brennan here. It's your favorite time of the week again. It's time for my friend Morrissey's, uh, oh, that's stupid. It's, it's my top 100, continuing that. Uh, this is numbers uh, 60 through 51. Um, don't want to have anything to say, so let's get into it. Number 60. Uh, Arcade Fire's first album, Funeral. Um, this came out in like 2004? 2003 or four. Um, Canadian band, um, if you have never heard this um, this band before, this album is a great place to start. It's you know obviously their first one, pretty um, straightforward um, indie rock. There's um, I feel like I don't know what it is about the album artwork. I don't really feel like it matches the music that all that well. Um, I mean this kind of evokes a feeling of like some uh, maybe like indie folk or some something singer songwriter like that. This is a uh, has aspects of a, a little bit of post rock, which you'll notice the theme with a lot of my favorite albums kind of have that same kind of post rock um, influence. A little post rock, a little bit um, more of a grand, um, ambitious kind of album. Um, the first half especially has has a little bit of a theme because there's all these tracks titled like Neighborhood One, Two, Three, and Four, um, and it's. A little hard to interpret I'm still kind of figuring it out for myself but um, it's just kind of about like you know obviously your, your neighborhood and like growing up and and uh, that kind of thing and I feel like they rewrote that same concept into a, another album uh, yeah it's they um, are interesting band to say the least but just you know great album um, again I would consider all of the albums on my top 100 to be 10 out of 10 um, this next one is a CD. I, I mentioned I would have a CD on my list. Uh, this is the only one. And um, actually, they just announced that this is getting a reissue. I mean, it is available on vinyl. Um, it came out, um, I don't even remember what year, like 2006 or something. It didn't It didn't get, um, maybe like 2002. It didn't get a, a wide release, very limited release on vinyl. Uh, it's Sun Kill Moon, Ghost of the Great Highway. Um, it had a very limited release on vinyl. They go for triple digits in the aftermarket. I don't have, you know, I don't really feel like spending $300 on a single album, as good as this one is. And that kind of paid off because now they announced, you know, standard black vinyl coming out like in February. So picking that up for sure. Um, Sun Kill Moon is a project by Mark Kozilek. You see his credit right there. Um, he plays under that name. Lately, he still does Sun Kill Moon stuff. Um, he was in a band called Red House Painters, which is a great, great uh, band from the 90s. Um, got a really sweet voice on this album. He doesn't, he, he's turning into more of a Tom Waits kind of gravelly thing lately, or maybe more of a Captain Beefheart. Um, but it, it, with this period in, in his songwriting, he had a pretty, pretty uh, sweet, mellow voice. Um, Great singer, great songwriter. Um, I mean, if the song, the second song in here, Carry Me Ohio, if that was <laughs> the only song in the whole album, this would still probably be in this exact same position on my list. And it's got more great songs too. I mean, the first one, Glenn Tipton, uh, Last Tide and Floating, uh, Duck Koo Kim is great, Pancho Villa, just fantastic album. Um, lots of really mellow, um, I keep using the word sweet, but that's just, a great way of describing this album. Um, just amazing, amazing record. I'll pick that one up on vinyl this year uh, when it comes out. Now, next up, we got Damage, Black Flag. Um, this is one that I got recently um, at one of my local haunts. Uh, something that I think a lot of people kind of associate with Black Flag or like hardcore punk in general is this kind of um, macho sort of uh, attitude with especially like the punk fans you know um, and that's kind of a turnoff for people I can definitely understand that it is for me too um, and so they think you know you got you got songs on here like six pack and TV party about about just getting getting drunk and, and just being like a you know just guys being guys or whatever but like there's a there's a certain like kind of um, anxiety and um, some like dark emotions on this record that kind of people I think tend to forget about 
I mean, <laughs> they have a song called Depression on here. Um, obviously, Damaged, 1 and 2, Room 13, Padded Cell, um, Police Story. It's just, you know, this kind of... Um, uh, this darker side or more emotional side to the hardcore scene um, that I think it's forgotten a lot of the times. Um, anyway, in terms of music, um, great guitar playing from uh, Greg. Uh, I'm sorry, not Greg Gann. Uh, yeah, Greg. Greg Gann is the main uh, one of the core members of Black Flag. Wrote, writes all the songs. Um, bass on here is Charles Dukowski, really good. Um, this is a great lineup. Uh, Henry Rollins on vocals on this one. This is a slightly later repress with a barcode. It's not a first pressing. It's not a modern pressing either. This is like from the um, late 80s, I think. But yeah, great record. Pick this one up if you like punk and you haven't heard it. What are you doing? Um, it's up there with, you know, like the Sex Pistols and, and Ramones and stuff. Um, next, uh, geez, what numbers? I always do this. I guess this is 67? Um, Brian Eno, taking Tiger Mountain by strategy. Uh, I got really lucky finding this, and I think I got it in like 2016 at Josie Records. Uh, it's not in the greatest condition, uh, but it was only like $14. Um, covers like a VG, vinyl is also like VG, maybe into low, lower VG plus. Um, 74 album, uh, what would that make it? Like his his third solo album, fourth solo album, something like that. It's still early in his career. He's still got a bit of the uh, the art rock going on. He's starting to make it a little weirder, which I, I tend to, to like some of the slightly weirder, you know, stuff. Um, Mother Whale Eyeless is a fantastic song. Um, I think it's also a great intro to Eno. Um, something like this, or Another Green World, or Before and After Science, any of those albums are a great introduction if you're not into electronic music, but you want to get into Eno, he has more of a rock aspect at the beginning that is good to get into, like I said. Um, I can't really, I mean, the typography on the back is very hard to read. It's, you know, yellow on, on different colored backgrounds, you know, different colors, um, and it's in a little bit of a scribble like a handwritten thing, but um, some big names are credited on here. You got Phil Collins, who worked with Eno all the time, uh, Robert Wyatt, uh, again, just hard to make these out, but fantastic album um, for fans of like Talking Heads, uh, maybe some Devo. Um, if you want something a little weirder with a little bit of a experimental aspect to it, while still kind of remaining in a, in a rock sphere, good one to get into. Good instruction, you know, like I keep saying. Um, so, 66 here is one of the most modern albums on my list. Um, as soon as I heard it, it became an instant favorite of mine, instant classic. One of the best in their discography. I will fight anyone who disagrees with me. Um, this is Radiohead, A Moonshaped Pool. Came out uh, 2016. I almost said last year, but it's 2018 now. Um, as you can see, this is kind of a deluxe deluxe packaging. Um, there is a standard one. I also have a CD. The standard artwork that you'll see is, is white, like this. Um, but the deluxe one is green for whatever reason, and they kind of did a cool thing where they gave it the um, the vibe of one of those old 78, like, you know, albums. Um, where it's, like a, where it's like a book. Uh, records are stored in two of the pages here. There's tons of... Uh, extra artwork and there's lyrics um, you know you just get this great artwork that's associated with the album kind of abstract um, now musically again this is one that I think is actually pretty accessible it's not as um, definitely not as weird as something like the King of Limbs it's not um, as existential as something like Kid A or a Kid Computer it's more um, straightforward, kind of like I think this is kind of a sister album to In Rainbows or a, like a sequel to In Rainbows, um, which will be further ahead in my list. Uh, spoiler, but um, yeah, a good one to get into. Um, I see this kind of sentiment. I mean, 
maybe this isn't the best place to talk about this. I see this kind of sentiment about, you know, there being no good music coming out, um, you know, past like, past like the late 80s. And I think that one of the most obvious counter arguments to that is the existence of Radiohead in general. They're, I think, some of the best music ever created. And as recently as two years ago now, um, you had this masterpiece come out. Um, so 65, I think I've talked about this before, and I kind of mentioned this scene that they're associated with all the time. But um, Interpol's first album, Turn On The Bright Lights, um, this is just like a common pressing of this. There's a couple different ones. Um, for fans of like Joy Division, uh, Modern Lovers, Strokes, um, they're in that kind of scene with the Strokes and, um, and the Killers and, and then kind of a post-punk revival. Uh, heavily associated with New York City. I mean, they have a track called NYC for, for crying out loud. Um, I mean, one of the best album openers, I think, is the untitled track, um, Into Obstacle 1. Really, the, the whole first side of this is, is flawless. I think this is one of the best side ones of any album ever, especially a rock album. Um, I can't remember the singer's name. He's got kind of a unique, or not, maybe not unique is, is a good word, but just an interesting voice. Sort of reminiscent of something like uh, Ian Curtis. Um, and like I, like I said, for fans of Joy Division, you'll love this album. Um, fantastic bass playing, fantastic guitar playing. Um, maybe not the most, you know, show off -ness, um, you know, musicianship on this record, but just solid. Um, they, they were going for a sound and they kind of achieved it and made one of the best... Uh, post-punk slash alternative albums ever, in my opinion. Uh, great one. So that would mean we're on the 64 now. Um, what, would, what would a top 100 list be without several Pink Floyd albums? Uh, this one here is Metal. This is actually um, one of, it's within like the first 20 records I ever bought. Um, probably, when was that? Probably like 2011. I got this for like four bucks. Um, which was a kind of a steal even then. Um, it's got this great gatefold that you see all the time on shirts and stuff. Uh, I think someone wrote their name here, property of like Doug the Magnificent. Um, anyway, the track listing here, you got uh, One of These Days, um, just fantastic opener. They really na nailed it there. Uh, Pillow of Winds, Fearless, uh, Saint Tropez and, and Seamus and uh, the whole B-side Echoes um, 23 minute song um, just one of their quintessential songs really um, uh, I love the artwork too I mean I know the US version is a little uh, harder to make out than the uh, some of the other versions but um, it's uh, just classic artwork regardless and uh, one of the best records. And I think this is my highest rated um, Rolling Stones record on this list. Um, it's Exile on Main Street. I want to say this came out in 72. I... Oh yeah, it says there in the bottom. 72. I have been known to be... Uh, I have been known to be wrong in the past. That would not be the first time I would get something incorrect in one of these videos. Um, again, kind of just got this... For a steal, it was like five bucks or something, or maybe it was like ten bucks. And oh, I know, I know what it was. I got this the same day I got a copy of uh, of a uh, of Aladdin Sane by Bowie, and um, I paid fourteen dollars total for the two of them. So I guess you could say it was seven bucks. But um, again, that's that was a great price for it even then. Um, some of their best artwork too. I mean, I love this collage of, of uh, photos. Some, uh, lots of photos of Mick Jagger on here, and obviously, I mean, he's the front man, but he definitely kind of outnumbers the rest of them <laughs> in the, the amount that this photo is shown. Um, double album, it's in one of these uni packs, which I know, they're a little bit annoying. Um, they're always split here on the bottom, uh, so I have to re-glue that um, if you get a copy of it. But, uh, I think... Uh, the side two on here on the first disc um, is just one of the all-time 
great flawless um, sides. Uh, you got Sweet Virginia, uh, Torn and Frayed, Black Angel, and Loving Cup. Um, and then uh, kind of the same thing with um, side four is pretty fantastic. I mean, Soul Survivor closes the album, one of the one of the best songs in my opinion. Um, Shine a light, all down the line, stop breaking down. Um, what else you got on this album? You got uh, uh, Rock Soft, Tumbling Dice, which I really love. I really love the kind of um, soulful background singers they have on this record. Um, I think that's one of the best aesthetics um, or aesthetic periods the Stones had. Um, and in terms of, you know, the Beatles versus the Stones, I guess I could consider myself more of a Beatles fan. But um, I do love the Stones, and I especially love the Stones and, and you know, that that stretch of five records from uh, 68 to, like, 70, uh, 73, especially. Starting with, like, Beggar's Banquet through, um, uh, Blanken. Uh, you know the one with the pants, Andy Warhol cover. Um, those, those records, I think, are the core of the Stones catalog in terms of, um, them just being the Stones and not really trying to copy anybody else, including the Beatles. Whenever they do their own thing, they figured out what their thing was and what they were good at, and they did that, and they were fantastic, and that makes them one of the best, uh, classic rock bands, in my opinion. Um, another classic here, uh, I guess this is 52, have I been saying 60? I mean, this is my 52. Um, Funhouse by Stooges, um, this is a later pressing, it's not a gatefold, it's kind of disappointing, I kind of wish I had a gatefold version, so I may pick up a, just a Rhino reissue, or if I, if I can't find an original pretty soon, for a good price, but, um, Stooges, I've already, I think I talked about them in the last video, yeah, um, with their self-titled debut, um, this is the second album from the next year, um, you got all-time classic punk song, TVI. You got 1970, the title track, Funhouse. Um, just um, fantastic, fantastic proto-punk album. Um, still dabbling in a little bit of the, you know, the late psych sound. Um, so for fans of that, too, if you're, if you're a psych fan trying to get into punk, this is a great one. The Stooges in general are, are a great band to, to kind of bridge that gap. And... Um, Iggy Pop is one of the all-time great, uh, great front men up there with Mick Jagger, you know, um, if not better. And, uh, again, I'm looking for another copy of this, if I can find one. So, 51, again, I think I have been saying the wrong number this entire video. Again, not the last time we'll be making any mistakes ever, but, um, 51 here is The Smiths, Made His Murder. Uh, not my favorite Smiths record, and not a lot of people's favorite either. Um, this one was given to me by Andrew uh, this past year. I won his uh, 100 subscribers contest, and uh, he threw in this and a copy of uh, Louder Than Bombs, um, which was super generous. I mean, they're hard to come by in the first place, um, and honestly, not not the cheapest things. But um, to be given this was was really awesome, and he gave me a no. It's still in there. Um, this is the original U.S. pressing. Uh, one of the greatest, greatest of all time, I, I say that all the time in this video, but one of the best of all time, uh, side one track ones is the Headmaster Ritual, I think that's one of their best songs, definitely one of Johnny Marr's greatest, um, guitar parts, bass playing is fantastic, the drumming is great, it's up there with The Queen Is Dead, um, I mean the track The Queen Is Dead in terms of the, the best Smith songs, um, especially, you know, like non-single Smith songs, like, uh, album only songs. Um, and then the U.S. version has, uh, it's un, unlisted on the back, but it's got, um, How Soon Is Now, um, which was on the U.K. version, um, kind of a long track. It makes the side two, it makes side two way longer than side one, honestly, because that's, like, almost a seven-minute song. Um, definitely one of their most famous songs, uh, I guess you could say it's Quintessential Smiths, um, and, uh, yeah, kind of a cool aspect of the, of the U.S. track listing. Um, I think I kind of prefer the U.S. one, honestly. I mean, 
the UK one is the one I, I kind of listened to first, um, kind of, you know, got, got associated with, and then I, I finally got this, and now that I've heard this several times with the, the track, How Soon Is Now, I think I kind of prefer the version with, with that track on it, and, um, yeah, uh, you know what I mean, and, um, Barbarism Begins at Home is a great Smith song as well, you got Will I Wonder, which I think is one of their moodiest songs, um, complete with, um, like, rain sound effects at the end, it's pretty fantastic, and I know the, the title track, Me Is Murder, is kind of divisive, um, that's just Morrissey, love him or hate him, um, and it's entirely, you know, entirely valid to love and hate him, like, kind of like I do, I don't necessarily, uh, endorse everything that he, he says, or the way he behaves or acts, but, um, I think he's a talented guy. Uh, anyway, that's it for this video. Um, coming up real soon, I got, I'll probably do the, the Vinyl Tag 2018. I've been enjoy, enjoying those videos you guys have been putting out. Um, I guess I should get to that pretty soon so it doesn't get too late. Also, I've been meaning to make like a top, I don't know if I'm going to do top 10 or top 5. Um, some number of, of my uh, favorite purchases I made in 2017 um, or finds. I guess I'll, it'll all be used stuff, no new stuff. Um, uh, just kind of, you know, I made some really fantastic, uh, used finds last year, and I kind of want to show those off, because some of those I made kind of before I started making videos, so I'll have that up pretty soon, probably before the end of the, end of the next week coming up here, but, um, thank you guys for watching, thanks for all the support, feedback, comments, thumbs up, uh, subscribers, I just passed 200, thank you guys very much for 200, I'm not doing a contest, um, I would encourage you to go, uh, do uh, Horror Biz Chaz uh, contest. Um, check it out. That's, and it's my uh, two videos ago. I made an entry for that. Um, it's uh, it's about you know local hometown uh, musicians or artists. And um, check out that contest. Check out Chaz's channel. Uh, Horror Biz, one word. Um, Tales from the Crate also has a contest going on, which I'll be doing an entry for before that ends before that, you know, finishes, um, and, uh, yeah, that's all I got, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next one, take care.